you're going to read a book called Those Shoes by Mary Beth Bolt. What do you notice about the boys on the cover? One of these boys is named Jeremy. He will be telling the story. Let's read the story to find out what happens to Jeremy and those shoes. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Buy these shoes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here, just need. Grandma says, and what you need are new boots for winter. Grandma tells Jeremy that there's no room for want, just need. What does she need? Brandon T comes to school in their shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom, seven times in one day, just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan, Jacoby, and Terrence each get a pair. Do you think Brenda T is really the fastest runner now? Why do you think that? Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor said. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size, Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid ever watched. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. And so does every Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid not laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. I nod and turn my back. I'm not going to cry about any shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like the word shoes and my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. What do you think about the kids laughing at Jeremy? Why do you think uh, Antonio Parker is not laughing? On Saturday, Grandma says, let's check out those shoes. You're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. It might be enough, you never know. At the shoe store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas? and had to give one of them away. We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop, not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the counter is or corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. A thrift shop is a store that sells used clothing for low prices. Why is the thrift shop important to Jeremy? Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, 
$2.50. Those shoes, my heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy pants. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get the heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Grandma kneels in the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the other shoe on and try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Jeremy limps when he leaves the bus, the thrift shop. This means he walks so slowly as though his feet hurt. Why do you think he's limping? At home, a few days later, Grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say, and Grandma gives me a big hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey's shoes. Are you wondering what Jeremy is thinking? What do you think he'll do? We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoe smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to another. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me to supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty and I can feel him wishing that those shoes were his. That night, I'm awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when he, I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there's snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race.